God of heaven who I'm named. In his reflection, we are his glory on display. In his heart is good, he is always kind. With the cross he on my side we are the sons we are the daughters of God no matter where we go we're close to the Father's heart and though we stumble he will not let us fall we are the Lord's
awesome is it uh, that we can still worship the Lord together, uh, both in person as online. And so um, this morning, I just wanted to share a reading from Isaiah 54, 10. It says, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Um, I know that we are in a crazy time, um, but God is forever with us. Um, and he is so faithful to meet with us. And so let's pray this morning as we get ready to enter into the remainder of service. Uh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for this amazing opportunity, Lord, to, to worship and have access to people who can't necessarily be here in person, Father. And so, Lord, I just pray that as Pastor Mike brings the word, Lord, that you would just anoint his speech, Father. Lord, that you can just meet us in our living rooms or, or wherever we're located at, Father. Lord, that you could just meet us there, that we can encounter you this day, Father, and be encouraged and know, God, that you are so faithful and true, Father. So, Lord, I just pray that you would just uh, be with Pastor Mike as he brings the word this morning, Father, that you would prepare our hearts and our minds wherever we may be, Lord, to receive that message, Father, and to be transformed from the inside out, Father. Go before us throughout the remainder of the service, Father, and help us just encounter you in a new, in an amazing way, Father. We thank you, Lord. It's in your son's precious and mighty name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> so glad that you're able to join us today. And uh, what a difference a week makes. Who would have dreamed a week ago that I would be I would be preaching to basically an empty sanctuary, although we've got the band and a few people that, uh, that are working and make sure the doors are locked, and then we've got the tech crew up there, and they're making sure that you can hear at home. And, um, but I, I never would have dreamed that, that this week uh, I'd be doing what we're doing today. It just wasn't even in the realm of possibility. Um, I, I, Debbie and I went to the to buy groceries the other evening, and uh, we, um, well, it was pretty entertaining, to be honest. We, we got there, and people were standing in line, and I, I, I thought maybe it would be bread or milk or uh, uh, water, something vital, and apparently it was vital. People were standing in line because a truck had just delivered a load of, uh, well, Clorox wipes. These are Lysol ones. But who would, who would dream that people would be lined up buying this stuff a week ago? I, and uh, I've got some coveted stuff here. I hear that there's a black market now for hand sanitizer. Here's the miniature uh, ones that you carry with you, uh, the disinfectant wipe. It says, kills 99.9% of viruses and bacteria. So be careful, though, because there's... 0.1% that it won't kill. So I don't know if that's corona or not. And here's Lysol spray. I just sprayed my Bible with this a while ago because our, uh, our worship leader, Matt, touched my Bible, and I wanted to make sure that it was disinfected. Who would have thought a week ago that all this stuff, you know, would be something that anybody would fight over? But here we are. Um, and who would have thought a week ago that people, in the picture behind me, People are fighting over toilet paper. Um, that's been pretty wild, too, is just the whole idea of people becoming really anxious and scared and afraid and nervous about what's going on, and yet here we are. <laughs> we are a little bit uh, anxious today. We, we've, we've heard about this thing called coronavirus or... Um, uh, what is it? C COVID nineteen. That was new for me uh, this week. I started getting the handle on. That's the official name of it. We knew that it was something that was going on in China, and then we heard a few other people got it. But as of last Sunday, really up through the end of this week, we were going to have church. You know, it's like well, it's other places and other people are dealing with this, but there aren't that many cases in all the state of Ohio, much less Cleveland. And then we started finding out that more and more people are being diagnosed with it. And we started finding out that, um, that the more testing there is, uh, the more people there are that have been diagnosed with, with uh, the coronavirus. And so I thought, well, that's, that's a little more serious than I thought it was. Well, if you followed along with the news, uh, you also know that it was officially declared as a pandemic, which means it's all over the world now. 
Um, hardly a country in the world has been touched by this, some more seriously than others. Then our president declared a national emergency. So I'm, I'm thinking, uh, this is getting more serious than I thought. Then our governor decided to close schools and said that groups of uh, over 100 should meet together. But, of course, that doesn't include the church because the church is protected by the First Amendment and freedom of speech. And unless they declare martial law, I don't think, I could be wrong, but I don't think they can keep us from meeting together. And so all the way up through Friday, I was pretty sure that we're just going to go ahead and have our regular services. But then I started thinking, well, maybe we do need to scale things back because they're talking about people not touching. How do you have children's ministries if you can't touch a kid? You know, you got to hold their hand, or if you're in the nursery, you got to pick up a baby or, or pick up a toddler. And so we need to do with all of our children's ministries. And then I started hearing from people that aren't going to be here today, and for good reasons. They've got uh, kids with um, immune deficiency issues or... You know, the elderly parents that they don't want even, you know, the kids might be carriers, but the kids might not get that sick. They didn't want their kids to be in contact with other kids. I mean, they're not in school. They canceled the NBA. They canceled oh, the, the basketball playoffs. This is March Madness right now. I mean, we are in March Madness right now. Um, it's just a whole different thing. And I got to tell you, as a pastor, I've never dealt with anything like this. Um, I've never... You know, canceling church was always a huge deal. It would be like, you can't walk in the parking lot, so we probably can't have church today. It would have to be something really extreme with the weather or something to not have church. One time, our church lost electric power, and we still had church. We gave people candles, and they came in, and we said, I mean, it would take a lot to just not have church. And so I was talking with the board on, on Friday, and you know, when I say talking, we were messaging and, and emailing and talking about what we need to do and asking them their opinions, and there was all kinds of different opinions about what we ought to do. And I said, you know what? By, by Friday night, I felt like I was going to lose my mind, really. I, I just, I shouldn't say that, but I was like, what am I going to do? What do we need to do? What's the right thing to do? And I prayed. I said, Lord, I'm going to go to bed, and uh, when, when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to make a decision about what we need to do based on all of these things. Um, really, when I heard that they closed the casinos, I knew it was serious, okay? All the casinos, the racinos, no, no. They said they're still going to run the horses for online betting, so some things have to go on. And uh, so, so we're going on like the horses, I guess. But um, uh, So I was trying to decide what to do, and I, I woke up the next morning, and I had a, a, a message from a medical professional in our church, um, and she's a mom and uh, deals with these kinds of things all the time. And so the first thing I read, and I asked God, give me clarity. And uh, this is the first thing I read when I got up. So, Pastor Mike, I am writing to encourage you to consider canceling church and only doing a virtual service online. My hospital had a virtual town hall meeting yesterday, and social distancing was the main thing they emphasized as our best defense against this COVID-19 growing and spreading and overwhelming our hospital systems. When I worked Tuesday, the hospital was already full without coronavirus patients. Acuity was already high. Some people would never consider missing church unless the decision was made for them. Then she said, as for me and my family, we will hopefully see you in a month. Um, I'm trying to keep my exposure to things as low as possible so I can remain healthy for work as I am on the front lines and very likely could wind up in the trenches. I pray for wisdom and peace in your decision making, but recognize that your leadership is important to how our congregation views the gravity of this situation. I'm praying for you, Pastor, and uh, I appreciate your prayers for me and my colleagues. And so this was the, that was the clarity that I was praying for. I felt that this is a calm, rational person who deals with medical issues who's saying, please, you know, uh, consider canceling. And I felt in my heart, I just had an awesome peace, as difficult as it is. I know that not everybody agrees with it. Uh, I know that uh, other pastors don't agree with it. Um, 
I've heard some comments from some other pastors, and some people are disappointed, and I know that anytime you make a decision, there's going to be people who agree with you and people who don't, but I do feel in my heart that this is the right thing for our church. We're a multi-generational church. We've got elderly people. We want to protect them, and we want to err on the side of caution, and so I think, uh, as a friend of mine wrote, he said that uh, for leaders making these hard decisions, just know that you'll be criticized for overreacting, and then when it's over, you'll be criticized for not doing enough. And uh, that's kind of leadership 101. It goes with that. And so I hope you'll pray for me and uh, all the pastors, all the churches that are out there, you know, trying to make the right decision that they feel God leading them to do. And um, so as, as we talk about this today, I want to talk about this whole idea of, of not having fear, but having faith. These are fearful times. There's a lot of uncertainty. When we don't know what's going to happen, we're more likely to be fearful about it. Um, when we think we know what's going to happen, sometimes we have peace. Although in my life, most of the time, what I expect is, is at least different than what I expect. But we don't know how this is going to end up. Somebody said, how long are we going to meet like this? I don't know. I talked with an official this morning on the phone, and uh, I said, uh, I hope we don't have to go four weeks. And they said, be ready to go longer than that. And I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> I hope not. And I'm praying that that's not the case. But we've got to believe that the Lord is going to help us and keep us together. I, I just want to share uh, some scriptures because throughout the Bible, because people... We are afraid. I mean, fear is a natural reaction to danger, uh, to the unexpected. When we feel threatened, fear is natural. Um, and so, th so throughout the Bible, we, we've got scriptures. Somebody said there are 365 times the Bible says fear not one for every day. That's really not true. I, I looked that up once. But there are a lot of times, let's just say it that way, where the scripture says don't fear it. And a, a really powerful one is the one we have up on the screen is Isaiah 41.10, where God is saying to his people through the prophet Isaiah, fear not, for I am with you. I want to tell you right now, God is right there where you are. He's not waiting at church for you to finally get back. He's in your home. He's in your he says, don't be afraid because I am with you. Don't be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. And if God is helping me, I think it's going to turn out all right. Amen? And so in the Old Testament, and then um, Jesus in the New Testament, in the Sermon on the Mount, he says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry. <laughs> That's easy for him to say. That's easy for you to say, Jesus, you're God. But um, he says, do not worry about your life what you'll eat, what you'll drink, whether you have Clorox wipes or, or Lysol or hand sanitizer. Don't worry about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more than food, more than clothing? He says, um, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Um, can any of you by worrying at a single hour to your life. As a matter of fact, worrying causes stress, and stress actually reduces your longevity, your life. It causes all kinds of illness. And so what we got to do is we got to stop worrying, put our faith in God. And Matthew 6, 34 says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Right? Don't worry about tomorrow. Plan for tomorrow. Be wise. I mean, think about tomorrow. Uh, there's a song that says, don't stop thinking about tomorrow. I mean, think about tomorrow, but don't with anxiety and worry. Because each day, I love this, each day has enough trouble of its own. I don't want to borrow tomorrow's trouble today. God's going to be there tomorrow. He'll give us the grace to face it. And uh, so don't worry about tomorrow. But the verse, I, uh, oh, here's Philippians, yeah. Well, we're going to come to this one at the end of the message, but... Just so you know, this is the most highlighted passage of any book anywhere on Kindle, on the Kindle app. More people have highlighted Philippians 4, 6 through 7 than any other passage of any other book, any kind, you name it. And it says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. 
peace of God which transcends all your understanding. Aren't you glad that God doesn't limit the peace he gives us to my ability to understand what's happening? Um, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You want to have peace? Then you need to not be anxious. Pray, bring your request to God, and trust God that he's going to take care of you. This is really what I want to focus on for a few minutes, and uh, it shouldn't last too long. Usually people make me preach longer. And i got a few people saying amen in here, so that I appreciate that. But I am going to try to get through this for our, uh, for our audience uh, that are online. By the way, if you, like, uh, reply or say something so we know you're there, that would be great. That would help us, too. Okay. 2 Timothy 1.7, this is what we want to focus on for just a couple of minutes. For God did not give us a spirit of fear. If you have a spirit of fear, it didn't come from God. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Uh, look at those words now. God gave us a spirit of power. That's the ability to act boldly. That power, that ability to do something. God gives us a spirit of power. He also gives us a spirit of love. That is the motivation for the action, for acting. So he gives us a spirit of love, a spirit of power, and he also gives us a sound mind. Um, that's translated other ways. One of them is self-control. Um, basically, what is that if, if I have God's spirit of power and of love, and if I'm thinking right, I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to lose it when things aren't going the way that I think they should go. He's going to give me a sound mind. In other words, if you make decisions when you're anxious, you're going to make the wrong decisions. You make choices when, when you're really afraid and when hysteria is going on, you're going to buy 500 rolls of toilet paper and forget your groceries, okay? And so God, though, gives us a spirit where we're able to act, where we do it because we love people and we, because we have a sound mind. And we've said here at our church that that's what we're about is loving God and serving the world. Just react. We need to respond. There's a difference. Fear is a reaction. It's a natural reaction to, to whatever negative stimulus that we, we experience. We become afraid. But, you know, David wrote uh, in the Psalms, When I am afraid, I will trust in you. He doesn't say I'll never be afraid. But he says, when I'm afraid, I'm going to put my trust in God. And so we shouldn't just respond. That's what the sound mind does. We're able to back up, take a breath, and decide what our course of action needs to be. Like about not having church today. Uh, I, this is not action out of fear. I'm not afraid of getting sick. I'm really not. I figure if I get the coronavirus, either I'll get better, like most people do, or I'll die, which means I get to go to heaven. In either way, I, you know, we can't lose. And so I, I'm not doing this out of fear. I'm doing this out of a compassion for people that are susceptible to this thing. And so we shouldn't react. We need to learn to respond. And we, believers in Jesus Christ, we're not the people that become hysterical when there's a crisis. We're the ones who are supposed to be bringing calm to the situation. And so here's, here's some, just, just some words that uh, I want to I wanna leave with you today. Four words. Faith, ministry, worship, and prayer. Would you mind, those of you, you say it good and loud because you've got to make up for all the people that can't be here today. But would you say it out loud? Faith, ministry, worship, and prayer. Let's look at these together. What it means to have the spirit of power, not the spirit of fear. The first thing is that he's given us faith. And, and what we need to do then is not speak our fear, but speak faith. Speak faith, but not your fear. Your children don't need to hear all of this fear. And all of this panic. Please, Christians, don't jump in on all these conspiracy theories. You know, that the Chinese started this to take over the world. Even if it's true, you can't do anything about it. So why frighten people with these drastic, crazy things? Or maybe they're true. I don't know. But the truth is, I need to speak faith and not fear. Because in the tongue, we have the power of life or death. And we can speak faith into our children. We can tell them, I know you can't go to school right now. I know it's kind of scary, but listen, God's going to take care of us. And some of us old-timers, we can talk about the times where God helped us through this and that 
and the other and uh, got better when I got swine flu, et cetera, et cetera. And God is going to take care of us through this. I love Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him, and he's talking to God now. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is, is stayed on you. That's faith. Your mind is stayed because he trusts you. Satan's going to try to distract you, and we want to put our focus on the Lord and speak our faith and not our fears. Speak faith, not fear. Say that with me. Speak faith, not fear. Um, and then next ministry. This is our finest hour. That's what Churchill said while the Nazis were bombing London. And uh, people didn't know. They would just start bombing day and night. And, and they'd be working or they, the kids would be in school or, or it'd be in the middle of the night while they were home in bed. All of a sudden, the bombs would stop dropping. And, of course, people were very afraid. And Winston Churchill got on the radio and he made a, a broadcast. And one of the things that he said was, this is our finest hour. Church, this is our opportunity to show people who Jesus is. And it's not going to be if we all huddle around the TV watching seven so to add to the freak out. But it's going to be as we seek to minister to others. Uh, one of the first people that reached out to me was Jamie Buxton. She um, works at uh, Laura's home, but she said, Pastor Mike, is it, how, could I get a list of the elders? This was like Thursday, and I'm like, wow, that's a great idea, and already we want to get that list of, of people, phone numbers, and so that we can check on our elderly in our church. I spoke with um, a city councilwoman, Sandy Spinks, today, and uh, here are some needs that we have in our community, and again, this is an opportunity for the church to step out and be the church. Meals on Wheels needs volunteers. There are elderly people who depend on this one meal a day from Meals on Wheels. Um, and a lot of the volunteers are elderly, and they're afraid to get out because they're vulnerable to coronavirus. What if the church stepped up and said, we're going to fill in the gap until we get through this thing. We're going to make sure that elderly people have meals, and we step up and we do that. And you contact the church and let us know if you can possibly uh, volunteer for Meals on Wheels. I know that we'll connect you with the people that can plug you into that. Um, kids who are out of school, many of them are on uh, free breakfast and free meals. Now, we're not sure. I know the governor said that the funding has been provided for that, but if the schools aren't open, I'm not, I don't know how that looks. And so in talking with Sandy, she said, uh, you know, if, if the churches could collect cereal, dry cereal, and uh, could collect some canned goods and make sure that these kids, while they're home, because some of their parents work, they're home alone, and that's another thing is, check on your neighbors, because some of them, uh, they have to go to work. Their kids, they don't know what they're going to do for child care. And here, here's the thing that I really want to say. I, I want to make this. All of the ministry doesn't have to happen through the church office. You, where you live, there are people, there are elderly people in your neighborhood that you could check on. There are people with children that you could just uh, say, how could I help you? You know, if we were to try to open up you know, our daycare again. Um, I, I don't want to open a can of worms there, but all the legalities of bringing a bunch of kids together. Plus, that defeats the purpose of the large group ban. And so we, we really can't do it as a church, but you know what? You can do it in your neighborhood. And friends, wherever you live, if, if you're watching, I know we've got people watching from different states and even maybe outside the United States. You have neighbors that need Jesus, and you can minister. You can be Jesus in the midst of this thing. Rather than being afraid and not, not touching people, uh, I understand we can't physically touch them, but we can touch their hearts by reaching out to them and loving them. This is a great opportunity for the church. I just believe that with all my heart. Um, and then worship. Here's what I want to say. Get this. Church is not canceled, just corporate worship. You can't cancel church because church isn't an event at a building. It's people. It's the people who have been called out to follow Jesus and to serve him in the world. And so I can envision during this thing some people finally realizing, oh, I am the church. So rather than worrying about I can't go to church, what if you ask God, how can I be the church? where I live? How can I reach out to people? How can I show people love? How can I meet people's needs? And I'm telling you, if you pray that way, watch out, 
because he's going to show you some things. And I, I thought of this day. I thought what, uh, some people might say, I don't even know my neighbors. Oh, <laughs> shame on you. And what an opportunity to get to know them. Say, hey, uh, you know what? Um, I've, I've noticed you, and, and I just want to make sure everything's okay here. Is there anything I can help you with during this coronavirus thing? How, how, can, how can I help you? And you might be shocked because you're not asking them for something. You're not trying to invite them to a church service. You're just extending Jesus' hand and Jesus' love to them. And you might be surprised how they respond to that. Worship. Don't, don't worshiping. Worship in your homes. Worship in your cars. Worship with your children. Sit at the table and worship God with them. Praise God for his goodness and, and with them. I was really touched when I uh, watched the video. You can't see it real well, but um, this is in Italy. And at 6 o'clock every night, they are on lockdown, the Italians, because of coronavirus. You know what they do? They open up their windows or they go out on their balconies and they start singing. And you can find videos of everybody in a community singing the same song together. Some of them are patriotic songs. Some of them might be pop songs. But I'm pretty sure that there are neighborhoods where they're singing uh, the songs of the church and, and songs of worship. And they're all singing these things together. It's just for a few seconds. And it's like, what if the church, instead of, oh, no, what's happening? And, oh, no, this is terrible. And, oh, no, we, we're not even having church. What if the church decided we're just going to worship God where we are? And I thank God for Matt and the worship team. We're going to do this on Sundays, and they know this. This is so important and vital. I understand. I hope you're singing along with us there at home. But please don't let this be your only worship. It's an opportunity to praise God, exalt Him, and, and worship Him uh, in the midst of this craziness, you know. And in prayer, our president has declared that today would be a national day of prayer. And... Um, you know what? There are a lot of things that a president can do, but that's one that I feel obligated to participate in. And it just happens to be it's a Sunday. And so I wrote down some things that we need to pray about. We need to pray for the elderly and the weak. We need to pray for children who are out of school and might need some guidance and help right now. We need to pray against the spirit of fear and hysteria in our nation. We need to pray for those who govern us, our president, our governor, local officials. And we need to pray that the church remains strong. One of the primary elements that's missing from today's service is the offering. And somebody said, you can't have church without an offering, and you're kind of right. And here's the thing, a lot of people believe that, well, if you don't have church on Sunday, then I don't need to give. But it can be farther from the truth. We still have utilities. We still have needs. We still have, you know, the salaries of our pastoral staff, of our uh, office staff, of our cleaning staff. They, we still have these expenses. As a matter of fact, the expenses don't reduce at all when we don't have a worship service. And so what I want to encourage you to do as we pray for the church, pray that God will help people to stay faithful with their giving. And, and, and it's, you know, it's not some trick to get your money. If you're watching, you're not part of this church. Don't feel like we're, we're trying to trick you into giving your money. We will take it if you want to send it, but that's not what I'm saying this for. I'm saying this because the church, the only way the church exists is we're completely dependent upon the, the free giving of people. We don't do anything else to raise money. It's just through the giving of people. And uh, to keep our church strong, we need to, uh, we need to keep giving. So um, if, uh, if you would join with me, I'm just going to close in a word of prayer. And there's one thing I wanted to read to you, um, and that is a quote by Martin Luther. He lived during the time of the Black Plague, of the Black Plague. Many, I mean hundreds of thousands of people died. And he said, here's what I'm going to do during the Black Plague. He said, I shall ask God mercifully to protect us. Then I shall fumigate, help purify the air, administer medicine, and I'll take it. I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order not to become contaminated and thus perchance inflict and pollute others and so cause their death as a result of my negligence. If God should wish to take me, he will surely find me and... I have done what he has expected of me, and so I am not responsible for either my own death or the death of others. If my neighbor needs me, however, I shall not avoid place or person, 
but will go freely as stated above. See, this is such a God-fearing faith because it is neither brash nor foolhardy and does not tempt God. Wow, that's great. Well, let's pray together. Um, join with me, if you would, and let's pray for these needs that I've, uh, I've illuminated. Father God, we do want to praise you and thank you for this opportunity that we've had to be together. Some of us are miles apart, and yet we were able to join together today. Lord, I pray for the needs of people, even as they've joined us by Facebook Live. Lord, you know them. You know where they are. You know their fears, and you know their needs. And I just pray, Father, that the almighty, all-powerful hand of God would just minister to them where they are in a way that they need it. Lord, we pray for our elderly. We pray for children. We pray for uh, parents that uh, have to work and don't know what they're going to do about their children during the school hours. We pray for teachers, Lord, that uh, and I know in our district they're, they're uh, putting together weeks' worth of lessons for kids to do while they're out of school. I pray that you bless our teachers and help them as, as they uh, continue to reach out to the, their kids, their students. And Father, I pray for medical personnel. We've got several, especially nurses in our church who will be, uh, as the one uh, lady who wrote me said, in the trenches. I pray that you would protect them. I pray that you would watch over them. I pray, Father, that you would keep not... Don't let one of the people in our church contract coronavirus. I'm asking you to do that. And if, you, if we do, then, Lord, I know you're going to take care of us, but I'm asking you to shield us from this thing. I, I pray, Lord, against the spirit of fear in our nation. I pray against hysteria. I pray against this huge spirit of anxiety. And I pray that we would be a people, even a nation, that, Lord... The beginning of wisdom is when we fear you. And, and, and I'm praying that this might be a time that you use because, Lord, you cause all things to work together. Lord, that you would use this time to draw people to you and, and help us to be, Lord, the attractor, the attraction that draws them to you. Lord, I, I pray for our, our president, for our governor, for uh, people, for the Surgeon General, for the Center of Disease Control, for all of these uh, these, these organizations that, um, that are trying to guide our nation through this time. Help us, Lord. Keep us from speaking evil of our leaders. Help us, Lord, to pray for them. And help us, Lord, to uh, follow uh, their guidance as long as it doesn't conflict with you and your word and our faith. Lord, we pray also that you would keep our church strong. Not just financially, Lord, although... As a pastor, that's one of the first things that I, I get concerned with. But, Lord, help the sheep not to wander. Help us to, to find ways to reach out to, to our family, to our church family, and keep our church strong during this time. And, Lord, we pray these things because we believe it's your will, and we pray it in the name of Jesus, and for your sake we ask these things. Amen. Everyone, uh, next week, 11 o'clock, same thing. And again, I want to say thank you, Ben, thank you, Matt, thank you, Josh, thank you, tech team, and thank you. We've got a little smattering of some very bold people who are doing social distancing, distancing here. And uh, we don't want to announce that the church is open because we can't do that. But we're just so glad that you all took the time to stay and made this part of your worship and, and your Sunday. Well, hey. Have a safe week. I pray that you're blessed. I pray that coronavirus doesn't touch you or your family, your loved ones, and that you will show a strong faith in the midst of fearful times. Have a great, great Lord's Day. Amen.